everyone. Um, so tonight, or today, rather, um, whenever you are watching, really, we are in um, Follow. That's the series that we started last week, and today we are in week number two of that, and it is called People Follow People Who Stand for What's Right. Again, that's People Follow People Who Stand for What is Right. So let's pray before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, God, uh, for today. And God, I thank you that in the past few days we've had a little bit of rain here and there because that is so needed right now um, with how hot it's been. And God, we just thank you for your ever-present self. God, for being in the midst of the storms with us if we allow you to. God, I pray that we would change our perspective today to, to see, you know, COVID stinks. It does. But God, I pray that we would choose to see it in a light that you're using this time to cha shake things up. You're using this time to shake up the church, God. And and I pray that we would, we would have a good perspective about it, even though it stinks, God. But there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And there is always a, a shining sun at the end of a storm. So God, I pray that we would keep our eyes on you and be with us as we go through this Sunday school lesson together. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. So before we get started, um, first question would be, how many of you are Astros fans? I am not. I am a Yankees fan, first and foremost. And then next to that, I'm a Cubs fan through and through. Um, not an Astros fan. Never have been an Astros fan. If you don't know who they are, they're from Houston. And in 2013, um, I'm going to imagine, I don't really know much about the Houston Astros, but I'm going to imagine that even not in this year, that is pretty tough to be an Astros fan. But in 2013, it was incredibly tough to be an Astros fan. Because in that year, the Astros finished the season as the worst team in the entire league. Needless to say, um, it wasn't a fun time. <laughs> but then four years later, the Astros not only finished at the top of their division, they went on to also win the franchise's first ever World Series. Um, it was crazy comeback story, and I know we all love comeback stories, um, I'm a Browns fan, so I believe in a good comeback story, trust me. Um, but then the story, it got even crazier than just winning and finishing at the top of their division and then winning the franchise first, franchise's first ever World Series. A few years later, after all of this had happened, it was discovered that the Houston Astros had been illegally analyzing signs between their opponent's pitchers and their catchers. So for those of us who maybe don't know anything about baseball, that basically meant that the Astros always knew what kind of pitch was coming next. Um, and it also meant that their batters were crushing it game after game after game. This wasn't just the work of a few players. It wasn't just, let's see, three. It wasn't just the people on the field, the nine people on the field, it was um, the entire team. So the people on the bench, but it wasn't just the players and the coaches. It was everyone from the interns for the Houston Astros to the front office, to the managers who knew what was happening. And I guess you could look, you could look at the Houston Astros as this it was either creative genius or dirty cheaters, depending on who you were cheering for. But we can still, we can take away two big facts from this scandal. And the first one is what they did was against the rules, obviously. And the second one, and even maybe, maybe even more important than the first one, is that everybody went along with it. It wasn't just one person who was trying to cheat. It was Everybody who was involved with the Houston Astros franchise knew what was going on. And so it's easy, we see from that story that it's 
It's easy for people on the outside of a situation to judge those on the inside for their poor choices. We may look at, at what happened and think, man, if I had been on that team or man, I definitely would have said something. But the reality is, is that we've all been in that kind of a position before. Maybe the stakes weren't quite as high as a major league baseball team. And maybe the, our cover up wasn't so extreme as theirs was. But at some point, all of us, we've gone along with something that we didn't really agree with. Maybe years ago in college or in high school, if you're um, just now in college or, or something like that, one of your friends had the answers to a test that was coming up that was really important. And maybe that was a subject that you struggled in and you knew that taking this test would make or break. Maybe it was the test that that said that you were going to be a gra that you were going to graduate. So you use the key to pass the test. Or maybe you've been around some people from work who spend all of their time or a majority of their time bashing their boss. And even though you happen to like your boss, you found yourself actually joining in. Or maybe you've been in a group of friends where one person is constantly negative to you about another person and you want to stand up for that person, but honestly, you just don't want to mess with your place in, in the friendship or in the group. So you just kind of, you don't say anything. Now, when we were kids, our parents used to ask us questions are like, the, I mean, I'm sure all of us can relate to this question. I know I can. Um, if all of your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it? And I used to think as a kid, like, well, that's the most ridiculous question. Of course I wouldn't do that. But when I think back over my life and some of the decisions that I've made, I can think of plenty of times where I've made ridiculous choices or done foolish things in order to be liked or, or to get an advantage maybe. But if you think about it, this behavior, this, uh, this deep seated desire to go along with what everyone else is doing, it, it makes sense. It is human nature to go with the popular opinion. It's human nature to take the easy way out, especially if it benefits us in the end somehow. Still, we all know that we, we know that taking the easy route often carries a cost. If you cheat on a test, you could miss out on learning information that might actually matter down the road. Um, I never paid attention to math. Now I will say it has yet to matter down the road for me, but maybe one day, probably one day, more than likely one day, um, when I become an officer, it will matter. Um, and I'm going to wish that I hadn't taken the, I never cheated, but I'm going to wish I hadn't taken the easy way and done the bare minimum. If you continue to say negative things about your boss, your boss probably eventually will find out because the truth will always out. And if you don't stand up for a friend, that friend more than likely will be hurt by your lack of action. But there's also, there's something else, there's something else on the line when we go with the crowd or we choose excuse me, the easy route, or we go with what's safe. When we don't make a stand, we always stand to lose something. And a lot of the time that's influence, which is what we talked about last week. Last week, we, we talked about the Apostle Paul and we saw Paul begin a journey as a prisoner on a ship. And after their trip, um, after their stop, rather, sorry, in Sidon, the crew set out to continue their journey to Italy. But they had several days of slow sailing as they struggled with strong, strong winds. It might seem, it's probably, I mean, to us, it would probably seem logical to wait out the weather, which is what we normally do. We don't go fishing um, when it's bad weather. We don't go boating when the weather is poor. We usually don't go anywhere near the water when it's bad weather. And so that would seem like the logical 
thing to do. But this wasn't just a storm that was going to blow through in a couple of hours. Um, and if you live in Florida, those storms usually, they blow in and they blow out. They're afternoon showers, quite literally. But this wasn't like that. The, the winter season was approaching and it was likely that if they had stopped now, they would be stuck where they were for months until winter had actually passed. And no one wanted to be stuck where they were. No one wanted to be in a foreign land for at least three months, away from their homes. And the Roman soldiers, they didn't want to have to watch over prisoners for that long. There could have been cargo shipment schedules to consider as well. So despite this awful weather, the crew pushed through into the dangerous waters. And that's when Paul stood up and in Acts 27, verse 9 through 10, he says this. We had lost a lot of time. The weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall. And Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. And he says as men, he said, I believe that there is trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger to our lives as well. Now, despite all the authority on the ship, not one person in charge was willing to do the right thing. They were driven by deadlines, greed, selfishness. Paul was, Paul was the only one to speak up for what was right. His motives were pure. His only concern was for the safety of people on board. There were plenty of reasons for Paul to stay quiet. He was not... <laughs> I mean, he was a prisoner on their ship, so he was not in a position to speak with any authority. He wasn't in charge of anything. Like I say, he was just, he was just a prisoner. And who was he to even address these sailors? And why would they actually, why would they even listen to him? But interestingly, Paul actually knew what he was talking about. We know from the Bible that he had been in at least three other shipwrecks. So unfortunately, Paul kind of had a lot of experience in this particular area. He knew what the warning signs were, and he knew what was at risk. But Paul spoke up because it was the right thing to do. He spoke up because he cared more about the people on the ship than he did an agenda. Despite what it, it may seem, Paul was just as eager to get to Rome as, rest of, as the rest of those in authority there. Paul not only wanted to stand before Caesar to gain his freedom back, but he wanted to stand before him to, to tell him about Jesus. Imagine that kind of incredible opportunity. Even though that, you know, he had personal reasons to continue, he relied on his past experience and his current instincts to determine that it wasn't right to put so many lives at risk. Now, the reality is that people, people are continually looking for someone who is worthy to follow. And that's what we, we kind of talked about last week, which is, are we worthy to follow? They want to put their faith in someone who will stand up for them. They look for that trait in role models. We look for it in politicians and spiritual leaders, especially spiritual leaders. But too often, many people simply accept what the majority is doing, even if it's wrong. If we want to build influence with, with others, we need to consistently stand up for what is right, even, especially when it's hard. People are looking for an authority that they trust. Paul wasn't, he wasn't an abusive or arrogant leader. He sincerely cared for the other people and he wanted what was best for them. He, he wasn't trying to gain followers just so he could be this, this idea of being more popular. He stood up because he believed it was the right thing to do. He let his faith direct his actions. Paul was a good leader because he was a good follower. And who did Paul follow? He followed Jesus. And when Paul gained more influence with others, he leveraged that influence with others to point people to Jesus. Paul himself said to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1, he says this, you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Paul's goal 
His only goal was to demonstrate to others the character of Jesus. And when you look, when you look at the life of Jesus, he acted differently than anybody and everybody else. His motives were based on love, which was a vastly different approach for, from some of the other leaders at the time. And when Paul stood up on behalf of these people, he was showing them what it was like to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Because Paul knew then what's still just as true today, that people will follow people who stand up for what's right. Now, if you want to, if you want to lead and influence other people, you don't need to have all the right words. You don't have to speak in front of hundreds of people. You don't need thousands of followers on social media. You don't need to be in a different job um, or pursue a new career path or go to a, a new church or anything like that. For most of us, our sphere of influence is relatively small. But here, here's the truth of it. It does not take much to build influence with people around you. The people who God has placed in your path for a purpose. When the people in your life know that you consistently stand up for what's right, that you'll speak out for, for what's right even when, when times are tough and hard and you might get laughed at, they'll start to pay attention. When your voice goes against the grain, when it doesn't simply agree with easy, comfortable, anything like that, people will see your motives are bigger than just what matters to you. And they'll start to follow. Now, when I say follow, I'm not literally talking about you recruiting a group of people who are going to hang on your every word or follow you around like a little lost puppy. No, what I mean is that people follow people who stand up for what's right. And that just means that people are often, will often look to you as a leader in your circle. In your group, in your office, they'll see you as a voice of truth and honesty. And that is what gives you influence. That influence gives you influence for Christ, just as Paul used his influence that he gained with people to lead people back to Christ. You may never know how many people are actually paying attention to you in your everyday situations, but your actions can demonstrate to others what it's like to follow Jesus. It's just like kids. My, my daughter watches everything I do, and sometimes I don't even realize she's, she's watching it until I see her do the same thing as me, and that can be good or bad. And it's the same with us. We don't know in our lives how many people are watching us and paying attention and looking to see what we do. But the minute we see them do that, we realize, oh, they've never done that before. But we're in charge of if we're having a good influence or bad influence. Isn't it true that we all like being around these kinds of people, people who have a voice of truth and honesty, who, who stand up for what's right in the face of wrong and who, who don't take easy. I know I do. We like being around people of integrity, around people who, who aren't easily swayed by the world, people who stand up for what they believe in, in respectable ways, in respectful ways rather. We can become these kind of people, or we can become this kind of person who other people want to be around. And as believers, that's what we strive for. Not so that they can be around us, but that they can, they can see Christ through us. That we leave, we leave our circles better than we found them. We are the salt and the light of the world. People should want to be around Christians because of the light and the hope and the truth and the honesty and the, the solidity that we have. And how do we do this? How, how do we become people who other people want to be around? 
first we have to look around. We, we have to see who are the people in our lives, who are our coworkers, the people in our houses, the, who are the people in our life? We need to first identify where we could have influence. The second thing is that we need to consider how we typically act around the people in our life. And that's a tough one. Do our actions and our words stand apart from what's just accepted by the world? Do we stand up for people? Are we willing to stand up for what we know is right? This kind of introspection is not it's not always fun. I promise you, practically is never fun. But it's important to be honest with ourselves if we want to grow. And if you're having a hard time being objective about it, why don't you call up one of your friends or your pastor who who you ha have been around and ask them, your pastor, your friend, your your spouse, how they see you act around people. And then the third way is to find ways to stand up. It doesn't mean that you need to jump on the conference room table and begin pointing out injustice at the office because that's probably not the way to do it. But it does mean supporting your friend, even if it lowers your standing with someone important. It does mean taking an unpopular stand even when it may involve maybe a personal cost. It may even mean saying nothing at all. If what you'd say is negative, it's like my mom always used to say it's, well, my mom never didn't coin the quote, but it's from um, Bambi. Um, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Keep your mouth shut. Know when to speak, know when to be quiet. So when we study the life of Jesus, we see, we see someone who consistently backed up his words in action. He had integrity through and through. And while Jesus spoke about standing up for others, and frequently, might I add, it was his actions that caused people to take notice because words without actions are dead. We, we, words are great, but you could talk to your blue in the face and still not have anything to follow it up with. His life mirrored exactly what he taught in the same way that when we consistently stand up for what's right, when we continue to build influence with other people, we can then use that influence to help them in their spiritual journey. Think about the people in your life. Who has God placed around you? Because people are there for a reason. Some might already have a relationship with Jesus. And for others, your influence as a trusted friend could be what introduces them to Jesus. But either way, you never know when your actions are going to be noticed by someone who needs to know God. When you stand up for what's right, when you stand up for people, you show them who Jesus is every time. We have to have integrity. Our words should match our actions and our actions should match our words because people follow people who stand for what is right so i this week i'm actually going to post um i'm going to post all of the questions for you guys um attached to the link um but the one question that i want you to focus on and i would really like some responses um I know some people might not be able to watch this because of when it comes on, um, but I would really like to hear some answers. Um, and the question is this, when Paul told the church in Corinth, he said, remember in um, chapter 11, verse one, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So when Paul told the church in Corinth to imitate him as he is imitating Jesus, Practically speaking, what does this look like in our lives? So I want you to think about it, read the verse again, um, meditate on it, and then practically speaking, what does that look like in our lives? So I look forward to hearing from you guys. 
whether it's a comment on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, or um, a direct message just to me, that's fine too. Um, but let's go ahead and pray out. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for this lesson. God, that yes, it is about standing up for what is right and it's about standing up for people. But God, I think even more so it's about integrity. It's about living up to what we're speaking. God, if we, if we say we're a Christian, living as a Christian. If we say we follow Christ, follow Christ out loud, not, not quietly in a corner or quietly in our homes where nobody can see. But God, I pray that we would be introspective and we would find out, God, A, who is in our circle? Who do we potentially have influence with? B, God, how do we act around those people? How do we act around the people in our in our sphere of influence? And then see God helping us to, to find ways to stand up by standing up for people and for what is right, even if it costs us something. So God, I pray that you would be with us. I pray that as we go throughout this week that you would help us to lead to use the influence we may already have to lead people back to you and to find out how we can influence others for good, God, and to share the love of Christ and to be imitators of Christ. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Hope you guys have a good week. Um, it's August, finally. Um, I know it doesn't really mean much because months, days and weeks feel like months and years now, so... Um, but super excited to see you guys in person again. Um, I'm looking forward to it and can't wait to see some more faces. Hopefully get some new people in. Uh, love you guys. Bye.